Welcome to In Game Chat for Saturday, June 25th, 2016. It is Season 10, Episode 26. I'm Scott. I'm RJ. I'm Matt. And I am Nathan. What? <laughs> Alright, fine. Yeah, just that as you need to, since it's attached to my screen. I don't know, you know. Yeah. We're good. Welcome to the show, everyone. If you'd like to get in touch with us, our phone number is 334-272-9228. But don't call it just yet. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Check out ingamechat.net. Not that anyone ever does. Check out oh. ingamechat.net for all the links to get in touch with us. You can find us on Twitter at ingamechat. You can also find us on Facebook. You can email us, everyone, at ingamechat.net. We are streaming right now on Twitch. Head over to twitch.tv and a little search thing up there. Type in ingamechat and you'll be able to find us. You can watch us uh, and join in the chat room. Live while we're not. Podcast. You don't have to do that. Not really. It's completely up to you. No pressure. This is America. Yeah. Do what you want. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> welcome to the show, everyone. And uh, before we uh, move any further here, I'm going to go to the phones because we're going to have a special, uh, eh, basically a guest host uh, for, if he can put up with the show for the entire two hours, then sure, we'll have him for the entire two hours. We have, uh... As he hangs up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we have Jeremy, uh, Pinter from, uh, ACG Angry Centaur Gaming. His name is Carrick, uh, I believe, from ACG, so we'll be talking to him throughout, uh, the show as well. Carrick, how you doing, man? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for, uh, thanks for getting in touch with me about that. We've talked about doing this for a while. and <laughs> It's only fact, been a year, man. I know, right? PAX West, I think, was when yeah. I ran into you last yeah. time. That sounds typical for Scott. It's yeah, well, it's typical for me, too. I was going to say, come on. Right. <laughs> six months is him, the other six months is yours. Exactly. <laughs> with our forces combined. <laughs> exactly. It's a year later. So, uh, yeah, so we've been trying to do this, and... Uh, I uh, just finally got around to do it. Speaking of packs, by the way, I just I just got my email confirmation so of my uh, my my press pass there. So yeah, I guess those went out today, and I guess I'll be seeing you again this year. Yeah, what? And then maybe next year we'll do another podcast. Okay, sure. Yeah, <laughs> right before packs. You can only stand me once a year. No, no, no. We could stand you as <laughs> as often as you want to be on the show, man. You yeah. are welcome to be on the show. So thanks for uh, for calling in. Yeah, sure. Just a just a, a note beforehand to those who do call in and to uh, Carrick on the phone here. We can conference people in so that he can hear your phone call and respond so you guys can talk to each other if you want questions for him or if you want, you know, or for anything else, just so so he can be on the same line. We're not that confident in, in it working guaranteeing that we won't hang up on one of you. Well, um, um, we're pretty sure that we won't hang up on 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 anybody but uh when we when, when, if you call in and when we do the conference there's a chance if you do get cut off and i'm talking to anybody that calls in and i'm talking to carrick right now if you do get cut off just call us right back okay so i think we'll be fine with that um that being said let's go ahead and get started with uh what everybody has been doing and uh carrick i'll, I'll save you for probably last on this one um sure. but uh i'll go with mine i've jumped back into destiny uh, again, just because that moments of triumph leak, and I'm I am a I'm an achievement chaser, and this is not even you don't even get an achievement for this. You just get a last time we got a stupid emblem. Then why chase it? Because it's there. I have no idea. But well, I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because enough of those little tick points had been filled in <laughs> that I felt like you know what I'm missing two. My let's little get it. Out. Yeah, let's get it done. <laughs> and that's what got me to do the first one. The second one now, it's like, well, I did it the first time. I might as well do it the second time, right? Uh, and, and as far as I know, if the leaks are true, I am missing two things that I know of, which are the two story updates they did in April, which you guys will do whenever you jump back in anyway. Yeah. And so I'll get those accomplished with you guys. 
And uh, this Crucible quest, that I, which is exactly what I'd been working on this past week, was trying to finish what's called, uh, uh, called the Mountaintop. And it is eight different things that need to be done in the Crucible, uh, which is the multiplayer version of Destiny, um, the multiplayer side of Destiny. And within those eight things are a number of different goals that have to be achieved uh, while playing multiplayer matches. It used to be very difficult because there were things like get six kills with a handgun and win a match. You know, win the match that you got the six kills in with. Um, I am not good at PvP whatsoever, so mm -hmm. things like that were tough. They nerfed those and just said, okay, fine. Just get six kills in a match. You don't have to win. You can win or lose. It doesn't matter. Just get six kills in a match. Do it four times. You're fine. And so that's what I worked on this week. And I finished step seven, turned it in, and I did not get a step eight. Mm -hmm. However, all the things that you get after you turn in step eight, I have. But I don't remember finishing any of it. So I'm going to have to wait until, obviously, the 7th of July, which is, you know, Bungie's big yay. It's the 7th of the 7th. It's the seventh day of the seventh month. They like that oh, number the seventh seven. Year? No, wait. The yeah. 17th year. No. They, uh, they really like those sevens, and that's when they'll announce what uh, year two's moments of triumphs will be, and then I can find out if I've got actually got that little box ticked off or not. If I don't, then I'll have to figure it out and see what I can do, and if I do, then, hey, I'm good to go. So that's really all I did. I played a little bit of Doom this morning before I left for work. What would you um, think? I'm very excited to play more of that. I really that was oh, that was fun. How far have you gotten into? Oh that? God, no, not far at all. I was that was right before right before we came in and right before I decided to screw around with our new streaming mm -hmm. software thing. So um, not very much at all, but enough to you know whet the appetite and want to do it as soon as I get done here with the show. Um, and I also played Transformers Devastation. Devastation? Is it Devastation or Devastator? Uh, Devastation. 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 Yeah, I, I dipped back into some of that last night as well. Okay. Um, and was enjoying the hell out of that as well. Yeah. So, uh, and that is all that I have played. RJ, you uh, still doing the Dark Souls 3 thing, right? Yeah, I'm uh, still playing uh, Still playing Dark Souls 3. I'm working on my sixth uh, playthrough on my main character. Uh, still splitting time between it and the other three that I've built up. One Sorcerer, one Strength, strength Build, one uh, Dexterity Build. But I'm going to Spend most of my time trying to get to New Game Plus 7, try to max that out, get the most scaling I can with uh, Souls, uh, so I can build up as many stats as I can. Other than that, uh, I played a little bit, like you, Doom, uh, just before you got in, I got a little bit of uh, Mighty Number no. 9 in. I uh, want to talk about that. that. Uh, playing that a little bit. And I'm glad you're playing that. Did, yeah. Were you a backer? No, I wasn't. It okay. was just uh, something I was interested in, just picked it up. All right. Um, so I just uh, started playing the uh, tutorial part of that uh, area. Um, first thing I wanted to try is see if... Um, the, his gun charged up like the Mega Buster did and mm -hmm. it didn't, so I'm guessing either there's something I haven't picked up yet or just that's just not a feature in the game. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there that um, I'll have to get used to because it's been a long time since I've played any Mega Man uh, title, really. Yeah. I think the last one I played was uh, X4, and then later on I found a, a PlayStation Store down, uh, download for the Mega Man 8. I think I played that's I think that's the last one I've played, but... Like I said, it's been a while since I've played any uh, Mega Man title like that. It's been a long time since yeah. I've touched Mega Man. Mm -hmm. I've heard more Mega Man music than I've played Mega Man mm -hmm. in, yeah. in <laughs> ever how long. So, yeah. yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, the uh, the only uh, thing that's different to me, unless it's been in a uh, previous Mega Man that I haven't touched yet, is there's some type of a, uh, energy gathering system. Uh, you attack the enemies and you wear them down and you use your dash to run into them and you absorb their cell energy, spelled X-E-L, cell energy, or something like that, right? Um, you can build up combos where if you can time it to where you can dash into them the moment you get them destabilized, uh, weakened or whatever, you get the 100% energy grade from it. If you like weaken them and it takes you a while to get there, you get less from that. And the better, uh, the better, the closer you get to 100% absorption, the better your score will be, the big, bigger score multiplier you get, you know, S rank, A rank, things of that nature. It's just something to get used to. Uh, but other than, other than that, the uh, standard fare really, you get your areas to choose from, pick which, uh, Pick which robots to go after, and um, and in the end you just play a boss. I'm guessing that's how it's going to be. Like I said, I've only played the tutorial, but it's looking pretty fun so far. Um, I'm um, I think I'm going to enjoy playing it. Um, I mean, I probably need to stream it. Like um, 
later on because I haven't gotten fully into it yet. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I just played the tutorial part, the first prologue. So I'll probably, uh, when I get into it, I'll probably start uh, streaming it and see what happens. Lavis there. in the chat room is saying he doesn't believe there's a charge at all. He's watched a full playthrough of the game and mm -hmm. never saw that. Wow. Uh, he probably didn't sit through the credits, which are about four hours long from what yeah. I read, because of uh, all the backers. Everybody gets mentioned. Everybody <laughs> gets mentioned. So the credits are longer than the game for the most part, four hour long uh, credits. Mm. So, uh, Matt, what have you been playing? I finished Doom. Okay. It ended rather abruptly. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> but it was well worth the ride. Oh, yeah, good. So I really, really, really enjoyed so it. So far, the few moments I've played, it's been worth getting it on that uh, discount I got it at from Best Buy last week. Yeah. So. I mean, every bit of worry that I had leading up to actually playing it is gone. Because, uh, you know, when we first saw the trailers... Yeah, that was the first. Yeah, I know. It, we all felt had that. Way. Yeah, but I it mean, wasn't it until I saw it, and 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 James has talked about this too. Well, yeah. he mentioned this in the chat room too when whenever he was in there was that, uh, uh, you know, our 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 ears didn't perk up for Not this or whatever. All. Our eyebrows didn't perk up for this until uh, we saw the Nvidia um, video playthrough of the game where it was like, wait a second, this is not that didn't look. Anything. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah. This is not this what they showed us at E3. Yeah, yeah this so. has me uh, interested. And it is a lot of fun. I actually did all the challenges, collected all the things. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, so I finished that out. Uh, started. Pl I played some more um, Stick of Truth. Yep. Um, I think I'm getting pretty far in that. See, uh, uh, Carrick, for the most part, we're in the mode of, hey, let's catch up on stuff before their sequels release. Yeah. Yeah, um, right. let's let's clear out the backlog until because come August we got Deus Ex, um, and then what is it's Deus Ex? What is that? Man, no, Mankind Divided. Yep, that's the new one. Okay, yeah, that's, that's the new subtitle. Yes. All right, cool. Human Revolution was the previous First, one. Yes, Mankind Divided, right. the second one. Yeah, so we've got that to catch up on. Mm -hmm. South Park to catch up on. Uh, Dishonored to catch up on. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So plenty to go through uh, in preparation for. What's going to be a nice, it's going to have a nice little chunk in August, mm -hmm. nice little chunk in, sep chunk in September uh, with Destiny Update, and there's a couple of other titles hitting in as well. And then, right. of course, October, there's a good bit of things getting released along with Last Guardian, um, which, of course, is where we'll all, a lot of us will be yeah. uh, into that as well. What else did you play? Uh, played some more uh, Witcher 3. Hmm. I've been one. like, man, I need to get back into this. I, I picked up uh, when they had the uh, GOG sale. Mm -hmm. I picked up um, Heart of Stone. Okay. You yeah. didn't get Blood and Wine? No. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll play the, the I first know. one yeah, first. It's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I can take this. By the time by the time I get done at that, they'll have another sale, and I, yeah. can, I can pick that up again, yeah. Especially the you know the pace at which I've been playing, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I'm, I, I've, it, ta it takes me a while to get back into the swing of everything for Witcher 3 and just try to remember, all right, what, what keys do what and everything. But now that I'm in, I'm like, oh, man, this is a lot of fun. So, uh, playing through that as well. And uh, Nate? Counter-Strike. Just doing more Counter-Strike. <laughs> yep, just waiting for next month. All right. Nothing else? No. Like nothing? No. Man, just Counter-Strike. Just Counter-Strike. I might. I have been considering jumping into Witcher, but that's just because I got halfway through and never beat it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Jeremy, on to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Assassin's Creed, actually, I just did a video where I discussed which one I liked the best out of all of them. So I went through and replayed every one of them, including like Liberation, some of the side ones. I was about to say, like ah. every one of them is in... Is in Even like yeah, the every single side-scrolling? Including the side-scrolling. Wow. Yeah. I, I've reviewed them all anyway. So uh, it was just sort of a... It's a cool time to look at the game development and, you know, some of the game track that those those developers sort of adjusted as they went forward so you can see the difference between one and two and could you have just skipped three and just been like yeah uh three actually in the video is the one that yeah i unfortunately feel that three was the one title where i continually wondered why i didn't like it as much as i should have three just did not grab me so, i don't think it grabbed anyone well <laughs> i think there's i think there i yeah. think there are some people out there who who did I, i'm oh, sure, sure there are yeah yeah, yeah but sure. i know the collective uh the the collective decision of of us here in the in the studio uh james who is not here with us but uh he we are also we're all just new no, that was yeah. just not our and it was it was the the problem was because of how much we applauded to how much and one two yeah. did different from one yeah. but also I just just took 
gigantic steps. Well, if you look at development as a whole, then you can see that 2 was sort of the beginning of this is what Assassin's Creed is going to be mm-hmm. as we move forward. And the, so anything that sort of went a different way or didn't really hit, you noticed. And something about 3 with their idea of sort of filling it out with the hunting and these open space, it, it just it never hit for me. And it was the entire time I was playing it, I was like, I do not understand why I don't like this more because it's a time frame which I enjoy. I enjoyed mm-hmm. the story. But it didn't grab me. Now, my choice of all those is probably nobody else's. Um, though I loved Syndicate, I actually liked Rogue. And the reason why, the reason why I like Rogue the best is because it's digestible. As a reviewer, I don't have the time to play 200 hours of Assassin's Creed and get 100%. So with Rogue, I was able to play a game that was a, a, a very truncated story. It is not actually the largest story. And a story with a gameplay... It all sort of went hand in hand, and then it was done. Yeah, and I, so I really liked Rogue, just as a digestible title. Rogue is one that I want to, uh, I own it, I just haven't done anything with it. Rogue, uh, unfortunately, what, and we talked about this when it released, when they released Rogue and Unity at the same time, different yeah, platforms, right. and I just, I, I couldn't understand it, because I play, I saw the end, I saw the ending of Rogue, and I saw the beginning of Unity, and I said, why did you do this? Because yeah, why? Exactly. You could have, I mean, uh, do a multi-plat release on Rogue and then maybe a year later, or maybe in the spring, you know, give me two a year or something. Yeah. Two within two within a year uh, would be fun. In the spring, release Unity because of the way those synced up so well mm-hmm. that it would just it just played straight through. And they, for whatever reason, other than the, hey, we've got new consoles, let's get a new game out there, right. and let's not do a port, which... I don't know. Unity, well, well, Unity has so many problems. Yeah, their inability to program correctly for Unity. I mean, it helped me as a YouTuber to make you know tons of glitch videos. But right, yeah. the, the fact is, is Unity was one of the worst program. I mean, talking to people when we went and looked at Syndicate. Well, actually, it was at PAX. No, it was at PAX a couple years ago. We saw Syndicate. Yep. And talking to them about Syndicate, it, it immediately looked better. I mean, Unity was falling apart when I first saw it. It was quite literally falling apart while we were playing it. And we knew that there was going to be issues. And then the moment it released, it was a disaster. Technically, it was a disaster. And so I wish they had waited a year for Unity um, and really shored that up, because I think Unity has some cool stuff. But aside from Assassin's Creed, um, I beat Doom for the third time, because I really do enjoy that game. And I think that the fast gameplay is something that a lot of shooters don't really have. Mm -hmm. They don't really have it synced up right now. In fact, Doom's movement feels a lot like Assassin's Creed when you're working perfectly and you're moving forward perfectly everything's in a rhythm and so doom as a first person shooter when you're moving forward and everything's just working right the movement across the levels is fantastic let me ask you a question when you were playing those assassin's creed games were you doing console were you doing pc i do both okay so i switch between the two and then i choose one to win i choose one to beat so for example syndicate i play it on xbox one or ps4 for a while and then usually go to pc i went to pc for example on that one um but it just depends like Rogue 360, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. it just that's what it was available for. And Doom, time. you're doing what are you doing on Doom? Oh, PC, of PC. course. Yeah, good yeah. job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and, and the Assassin's Creed. Did you also do the um, the Bloodlines and the PSP? I didn't. Uh, sorry. So I should mention that if they're on the mainline consoles, I do because okay. otherwise I start getting into control issues where you start talking about how like the controls different and things. You know, like they're, you're starting to separate the the very basic platform which it's on. Okay. So I just did. If it had been on a console or on the P on the on the PC, I covered. Kind of like how um the the one with the female and the French revolution. I mean the liberation. yeah, I would have covered that, but they yeah. moved it to the PC. But they yeah, moved so it to I the did. PC, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I played. Okay. Um, I'm I'm back into, of all things, even though I didn't love it when I reviewed it, I'm into Division because I'm doing a, a large video on foveted rendering and some of the stuff that I hope we'll see in the future with that. And so I'm using the Toby IX, which is an eye tracker, and it works in Division. It also works in Syndicate and a couple of the Assassin's Creed games. And, man, fantastic with eye tracking. Like, it is, it is redonkulous. It is the, the first time I used eye tracking was E3 in an MS, MSI booth. It's and, ridiculous. And it was on their laptop, and they had Assassin's Creed 3 set up. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was the freakiest feeling. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> here's what here's what I tell people. If you dislike the controller versus the keyboard, then the change between a keyboard and eye tracking and a keyboard and not eye tracking is about the same. 
It was I, freaky. Oh yeah. God, it was it was just it, yeah. it was freaky but fun. It was it, is. it, it is. was one of those things where like this this is amazing. Everybody needs to try this. Look at this. Yeah. Watch this. You know. Um, so where you look at the screen, it, the yeah, and don't moves. and don't think head movement. And I'm, don't think head movement. And also don't think just looking. For example. Uh, dynamic lighting, uh, dynamic focus, dynamic um, uh, tagging of enemies. For example, if you're in the Hunter view or the Assassin's view in Assassin's Creed, if you look at an enemy, it tags them automatically with no button presses. If you're running, you can disconnect your view from your movement. So I can look to the left, use the rappel gun and syndicate, and, and, but I'm running forward. And so it takes a tiny bit of time to get accustomed to. But for example, division, if you're suppressing somebody on your left and you notice people on your right, if you are in cover, all you have to do is get out of cover and the cursor immediately jumps to where you're looking. So there's no, you don't have to saddle across the screen to look at them. It immediately knows you're looking at them, and nice. so it aims at them. Yeah. And it's, it's fantastic. Uh, w- w- one of my uh, favorite setups I've seen that I would love to do would be uh, three monitor setup and then have the eye tracking for elite dangerous because that is it's almost as good as well, yeah like, it works it, for elite too it's completely different aspect of sen- a sense of vr with, right within the right. spaceship and yeah. uh, I, I forget um the youtuber's name whatever he was reviewing it and it's so cool so yeah. cool to do that in elite yeah so that's pretty that's pretty much what I, i've been playing technomancer but because i'm under nda i can't really talk about it right um, i was gonna say I, I figure you're probably under some ndas on some things yeah. that you're playing which is fine you don't have to talk about it can you tell us what you are uh, the uh tech there's there's some stuff for vermintide i'm looking at um some i'll be looking some more at some stuff that they're releasing soon okay and then uh technomancer i, I think i have about i don't know 80 hours into it i think and when uh when is that going up 28th okay yeah, unfortunately, and, and, you know, as a reviewer, you get accustomed to it, but unfortunately, their embargo is for the same moment they release, um, which I've learned doesn't mean much, but I know a lot of people immediately hedge their bets on that. Yeah. I'm not saying it doesn't matter here. I'm just saying, you know, it's one of those things that happens. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty much it for, for actual games. The Assassin's Creed thing took me so many hours that I sort of yeah. stepped away. I was going to say, how, much, how long did that take? Oh, way over 100 um, and I didn't. I don't hundred percent games for the most part. In fact, I think a lot of people get tired of the Assassin's Creed games or those kind of games. Usually, are one hundred percent in them. Mm-hmm. For me, it's more of a when I when I lose enjoyment, I move the story forward. When I feel like the story is a little boring, I'll move the gameplay forward. And uh, wow, yeah, way over a hundred hours. Like it's insane. But it was fun to do. It was fun to look. I mean, it's a lot of history there. Whether you like those games or not, if you're interested in development, you can see the track that they used and you can really you can really tell where they saw that they needed to fix stuff where you know customers were complaining about stuff it, it was right. actually very very fun to well yeah to because black flag black flag followed three yeah which three introduced naval so, right and yeah. three three and, and and naval was was it immensely improved it was in in black flag i've actually all... been thinking about going back to black oh, flag. Man, black flag you know why Re- rogue was good because rogue had it as well but didn't go nuts yeah. with the amount it was just it was in there and uh and that's why i enjoyed it but yeah you you get to see all that and as somebody who's interested when i review in development anyway that's sort of how my reviews are uh it, it was fantastic to, it was fantastic to see i'll probably go through the far cries next or uncharted i've already i just recently started uncharted one so i'll probably do that. i was going to say that the the far cry would be interesting it would um, be very interesting because i know yeah. a lot of people didn't like primal and i actually i, I thought it was okay so. I, i've been meaning to try primal uh i enjoyed the original far cry i liked half of it yeah the first half was the first really half great. yeah right then the second <laughs> half just no nah. yeah yeah i know and yeah. then there was, For and then a lot of people played it. They probably know what I mean. And then two, I, I don't think was received too. I, we were excited about it, and then when we actually played it. We didn't receive it too well, just for the fact of that whole. I keep on trying it. I, As Kadi said trying. on the channel, the only game in the world where, for some reason, somebody thought it'd be fun to inject yourself, uh, you know, every thirty seconds to heal yourself from yeah. illness. And you know, I mean, the, the game had a lot of cool parts, but there were so many gameplay issues with the cycle of gameplay their yeah. cycle of gameplay was really short for example injecting yourself would be fine if it was like every other day mm-hmm. but it every cycle in that game if you look at their systems and how they set them up all of the gameplay cycles were, were truncated they were short and it was almost like they were they belonged to a different game and so yeah. you were just like okay i'm injecting myself because i drowned because i caught malaria <laughs> while crossing a stream yeah I mean, again the shit, the stuff the stuff didn't make sense yeah i keep on <laughs> trying to uh um, get 
uh, back into two. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a uh, commercial break here, and then when we come back, I'm going to going to talk to uh, Carrick a little bit and get. Uh, I didn't want to. I'm not going to. We're not going to interview him for two hours, but I do want to uh, introduce him to our listeners who may not know uh, who he is, what he does, that sort of thing. Get some thoughts uh, on on what he thought about E3 since we're just still coming off of that, and uh, also uh, talk about some of the stuff that happened this week. Uh, Mighty Number no. Nine is something I would like to get into as well, and what else do I have here listed? Um, <clears throat> Tiny Build having an issue with uh, G2A. Oh yeah. Yes, this is an interesting one, um, and we'll 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 talk about that also in the show as well. We'll be back with more of in-game chat in just a moment. Here, I uh, whatever you'll know what this song is. We'll be right back here on in-game chat. And welcome back to in-game chats. That is music, of course, from Last of Us. Um, like I said, every now and again we play some tracks on here that I just want to listen to. This is definitely one of them. So, welcome back to the show, everyone. Uh, we are on the phone with Carrick from ACG, and in case you don't know who that is or what that is, well, I guess we'll let him explain who he is and what what uh, it is that he does uh so uh go well uh, let's see when did you get started doing the youtube stuff by the way angry centaur gaming uh, is can they find you on youtube under acg or angry centaur gaming yeah actually it comes up as both now okay awesome yeah when did i get started um probably about uh, i think it was two and a half or three years ago because the first video i ever did uh I, that uh, angry joe uh ended up posting about me and got so mad at me, so it ended up helping the channel. And I think that was the one of the first videos I did. What was the of. topic that he that he? Was... I liked Star Trek the game. I didn't think it was great. I was just like, this is not as bad as people are saying. Like it's a you know for cheap, it's an enjoyable. You know, you know, I do the review with the rating, the buy, wait for sale, rent mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so I was like, yeah, you know, I like you know, if I bought this game, I wouldn't feel like I was ripped off completely. And it was okay to play through. And he had a fit, and so he he posted in his forums that I was that I was paid off and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I've got 212 subscribers. I was paid off in shillings, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and that sort of started it all. And then one day I was just talking to Cadiz, the other guy on the channel. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm just going to do it because my job at the time, I was just becoming completely burned out. I've been working since I was 17. So I was just like, you know, I'm done. I, at that time, I think I was 37. Is was this, like, oh. is this all you do now is the, is yeah. the YouTube stuff? Yeah, I had a pretty good retirement. I'd saved up pretty well. So I was like, I'll just, I'll see, you know, if it works. And I have worked, I worked at Sega for a small amount of time as a tester, worked with a couple online companies as a tester. I knew a couple developers. Um, some family members worked at Microsoft, Sony. So I just contacted them and was like, do you guys think I should give it a try? And I had always noticed people had listened to some of the stuff I said, because I, when I review, I do talk about the development track and 
music, sound music and voice, which are really important to me. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, if you look at what people purchase, many people spend more on a receiver than a TV, for example, especially now. So it wasn't being covered. And I think that that's sort of, that's sort of what ended up making the channel somewhat popular was covering sound music and voice because, you know, I mean, people are spending a couple hundred on a receiver, you know, some speakers at their, and, and no one was covering it. No reviews cover that. Yeah, I don't even, you know, I my setup in my living room is where I used to game a lot. Now I don't even do that very much anymore. It moved to it, it moved to the PC, mm-hmm. which is in my PC room, which doesn't have anything quite like what I've got in my main room. Right. And then, uh, and then I got really lazy and decided to move stuff into the bedroom, <laughs> so I could lay in bed and play games. Yeah. Uh, and so, and that doesn't even have that has doesn't doesn't have the setup either uh, that I got in the uh, the main room. So, but I do understand. Uh, Putting in the investment on a receiver uh, more than what you do on on some of your other components of a home theater system. Well, yeah, uh, and you look at some reviews and people are saying, oh, the music. I mean, for example, most of the time you'll hear like bombastic. That'll be the only word they describe for music. And that doesn't describe, I mean, that doesn't, it doesn't talk about if there's an emotional resonance on the level with the music. It doesn't, you know. And so you start seeing all these channels, even YouTube channels, where people are remixing the music for Skyrim, for example. Mm-hmm. And they're doing all this stuff. There's obviously a huge contingent of gamers who think that sound, music, and voice are incredibly important. For example, every game we see, what do we talk about? You know, oh, cutscenes, the, the, the dub is terrible, or the, 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 the voice is terrible. And until people start hitting on that, companies will not care. Yeah. And so what happened is a couple voice actors, the guy from Lost Planet 3, uh, actually was one of the first ones, started spreading my name, and that's sort of how... I, I got known by some of them, Nolan North and stuff, who, who's contacted me a couple times. So that was pretty nice. Yeah, we've had we've had Nolan on the show before, um, and we've had David Hayter on the show. Yeah. Uh, we've had music. We've had uh, composers on the show. We did a complete show with nothing but music. Oh, that's very um, cool. Yeah. Once and talked and had and had interviews with composers for that one um, when we had that on. So. Yeah, it's super important. And for some reason, people just don't cover it very much. Well, for us. What? We're radio, so you yeah. know, <laughs> it was an like, audio hey, format. We'll, we'll just do that. But I mean, I know we stream, but we also, yeah. Like uh, the, the song that we had playing into this, The Last of Us. The Last Could of you us. imagine yeah. The Last of Us without that score? I don't well, think it would have the same resonance to it. When I review, I notoriously, uh, that's what I'm known for, is turning off sound and turning off voices and then return, and then turning it back on. And that's one of the ways you can sort of see if there's a resonance. Mm-hmm. You know, does this character sound right? Does this music sound right? And... Yeah, I implore anybody who, you know, doesn't think it's important to do exactly what you said and, and you know, turn your, turn your music down and, and just play the game. And some people are minimalist like that, and I get that. There are some people who like that. But at the same time, most of the time, the companies do want the music to fit the game. And so they've done some work on it as well. And so I, th- I think looking at it and sort of discussing that in the game review is, is really important. Where are, you, where, not talk about where are you based out of? Oregon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Luckily enough, near near some of the place, Pax West. Yeah, that, no kidding. Nice. Yeah. Not a not a six hour flight from Alabama. No, a train ride. Actually, we took the train to GDC last year. We'll or to GDC and to Pax, and we'll probably do the same. Thing. Have you done any? Have you gone? Have you? Did you do anything this year? Uh, we did not. You know, looking at the finances of it all, to be honest, a channel like mine, you know, I can get more views just covering the news and just talking about stuff than going and doing a lot of interviews. Yeah. GD- GDC was great because I had talked to people like the developers behind Vermintide, Kickstarters, and those guys want to do interviews. So I do a lot of interviews on the channel mm-hmm. as well, especially for Kickstarters. That's big to me. Like, just because other people are not really happy with how Kickstarter is going doesn't mean there's, some, there's not some amazing ones that are available on there. And so going to GDC helped a lot. You know, talk to some of those people, meet them, um, Chris Avalon, you know, some of the, some of the writers for different games. Yeah. Very fun to meet those. We've had him on uh, the show as well. He's hilarious. Did he tell you the Hellboy story, the, uh, the Ron Perlman story? Uh, I don't remember if he did oh, or not. We had, it, we, there were two people on it when we had him on. It was Chris Avalon, and it was when they were pushing, it was for Kickstarter when they were pushing the, the uh, Tides of oh, Numenera. Yeah, you should, the, the story that he told at GDC about Ron Perlman basically threatening to kill him was so funny. I mean, it was like, and, you know, he's easy to under, you know, he's, since he's a writer, he's, he's good with, you know, his speech patterns and stuff like that. And having him tell that story was just, it was awesome. Uh, instant fan to, to sort of listen to him talk about having to work with voice actors. And, and that's one of the GDC events we got to go to. And that's one of the reasons why I like GDC. But it costs a lot of money, you know, for, yeah. uh, for a channel, for somebody like myself, 
we drove down one time to GDC and then one time we took the train. And then this time we'll probably take the train because parking at those places are is insane as well, cost wise. So yeah, we'll go to we'll go to PAX West. I'll see you there. But um, you know, E three we skipped this year. And I say we because Cadiz occasionally tags along as the guy who helps, you know, film and stuff like that. He this was my yeah, this was my first year in about eight years of skipping E three. I did mm-hmm. not go this year. Yeah. 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 Well I yeah, I, I, so I heard that. So you normally went, didn't get to go this time. I just decided not to. Just decided not to. Yeah. yeah. I was going to, and then, you know, I said, I, it was eight years of doing it, and you come away realizing, I, I do make some great connections, and it helps to get some it interviews does. set up, yeah. but um, nothing that I couldn't do with an email. Well, I, for example, and, and I agree, we had Matt Broom, uh, a comic book artist, he's done stuff for everything, Todd McFarlane he's worked with, all this. he's doing a new Kickstarter called Kinetic, and we wanted him on the show. We started talking to him. And even he, you know, some of these other companies are like, even for them, it makes sense to sometimes skip it and just be like, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's really not financially feasible when you have YouTube channels that'll cover you and all this kind of stuff. Sometimes going to those big events just isn't as feasible or as financially, you know, a a good decision as it was in the past, I think. Yeah. And and, And I think this year with E3, I mean, with uh, EA sort of bowing out and right. Just all the Disney other backing Disney, out, yeah. Activision backing out. Um, it just, this year just really felt like not the year to go. Although now that I didn't go, I was I was disappointed because you know, yeah. number one, I wanted I really wanted to see Amy get inducted to, or not yeah. inducted, but get her get award, her get her BAFTA award. Yeah. Really wanted to see that, and just to see her because I haven't seen her in about three years, and um, and also uh, to just meet back up with the uh, abduction guys from Cyan Worlds who were on the show floor. Showing off abduction uh, with oh, I uh, forgot. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I got to yeah. see when I went to Seattle not last year, year before last. Uh, when I went to Seattle that time, I went an extra day ahead and spent the I spent Thursday driving to Spokane mm-hmm. and went to their studio, um, which was a big thrill for me because I'm such a huge Mist fan and I brought yeah, along all my stuff and had it in the dude autograph. He was more than happy to autograph it and everything else. So tons of uh, Tons of missed memory. He took me down to what he calls the vault, which is just basically a a, a pantry. Memory um, home it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he goes in there and he just he's like, hey, do you have uh, do you have missed in the uh, Japanese 3DO version? And That's like, awesome. No, he's like, here you go. Here's a copy because he's got tons. It's their vault of like. T-. He's like, do you have the 3DS version? No. Here. Do you have the 3DS version that was made by this company? Nope. Uh, Sunsoft. Here. Here you go. Here's the Saturn version. Here's you know. Uh, just right. all the different kinds. You get like, some mist, and you get some mist. Oh, just a ton. I came back with so much mist stuff. I could, but I could, here's, I could so make that's a, a positive. But you know, like not to. I'm, <laughs> so I, I don't want to bring up a sore spot for a lot of people who probably purchased this or maybe have. But like Homefront, what, the game I played of Homefront at E3 uh, or at GDC and at, at PAX isn't the game that got released. Are you so talking? Some, are you talking about the sequel? The Revolution. Yeah, yeah. The one that just came out. I know. So, so I'm telling you right now. I don't know what happened. I, I have no clue what happened, but the game that Cadiz and I spent hours on is not the game. It is not the game that got released. It and isn't. So, no. And so you have this situation where if you go, you're not 100% sure what you're seeing is what's going to be released anyway. And so there's there's that too. Like a, There's a lot of the pomp and circumstance going on where you're being shuttled from place to place. And you're, you're not, a, you know, you, you may have some people you like, like I've met a couple people that I, I consider great friends, but at the same time, shuttled around, especially at an E3, and it really seemed to be sort of this way at PAX, but you get sort of shuttled around, and you're not 100% sure what you're seeing is even coverage-worthy anyway. Now, the reason why I say that is because my channel is very fact-focused, uh, so I don't want to say something, and then even a year later, somebody be like, hey, you know, what you said was wrong. Mm-hmm. So I don't, some of, the, some of the stuff that we saw, for example, at this last PAX, I did not cover at all. God I, forbid you're wrong on the Internet. Well, <laughs> it's, God forbid. See, that's the thing. I don't that's what the channel sort of based around yeah. is not being like a lot of the others. And, and for example, we didn't, you know, the name change to ACG because people were just so angry about the angry being in the name. So, oh yeah. The whole, yeah. yeah everybody's yeah. Angry. angry. Yeah. 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 And what's funny is mine was 23 years old. That, that username's 23 years, years old. It predates the, the, you know, YouTube, but people were so, there's such a overriding thought process that occurs when it, when it comes to YouTube and stuff like that, that you, you do have to sort of fit and make sure that things are in a, in, in a specific way. But I don't want to cover something 
like Homefront, and then whatever they're showing is not what we saw. I mean, well, that was you know, and, and Homefront was was a game that that you and I both played. Mm-hmm. Another another fantastic example, and one that we brought up on the show. Um, was not necessarily a game that anybody actually played, but it was video that was that was released uh-huh. um, and released and released and released over and over again. And then at some point, everything changed. And right. the game that I'm talking about is Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. that's one of those where uh, at E3, as as they as they are wont to do so many times, they bring you into a room and you just watch a video yep. of it. Yep. Usually that video gets released days later uh, on the internet, which is another reason that I decided not exactly. to go. Because yeah. I would come back and I would do these write-ups for COG, where I was I would do this. I remember specifically doing one for Just Cause Two, mm-hmm. uh, because I was trying to write down everything that I had seen. And then I remember a week later, after I published this, uh, <laughs> a week later they released the entire video, and I was yeah. like, oh, here you go. They did the same thing with Uncharted Four last year when I was at E3. They showed us an extended version, and then they released it. Uh, not too long later on, on the internet, so it didn't even matter that I had written out this whole description of how everything had gone. It was like, oh, I could have just waited a couple of weeks and said, here's what I saw, boom. Yeah. There's just, yeah, and it just, it's, again. It's a unique situation for sure, and I think over the next three to four years we'll be seeing how it sort of, I think it, it'll sort of even out to where, you, you know, we we see it, where these people are going to start putting their ba- putting you know their eggs in their baskets and deciding is it worth you know coverage at, at this yeah. event or this event. But everybody is bowing out, and Sony's got their own event, and Microsoft's got their own event. And the the fact is is that somebody like myself who's smaller doesn't have a ton of cash. It's much easier to just talk about an impressions video and say, hey, this is what I thought, than to go there and really I'm not big enough to get into any of the major events. You know, or or at least talk to you know. We did we did get to talk to Phil Spencer, but that's because I basically chased him down on the street. Mm-hmm. But the the fact is, is you you won't get that as a smaller channel. So I'm just trying to concentrate on reviews and making sure that that what I cover is you know as accurate as as I can possibly make it. Because an, another thing is, there's reviews are sort of going away, and that's something that I don't want to see. So that's why I do a lot of reviews and almost no quick looks, almost yeah. no walkthroughs. Um. Let's. Uh, let me. I'm going to try and do this conference thing on the phone. If I do hang up on you, or if I hang up on W. Matthew, who's on the other line, uh, please call back. It is not sure. intentional whatsoever. <laughs> I hung up on an astronaut once, and I can never. I, well, I, I'll talk to you in another year, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, hang on just a second. Let's see if we can do this right. Uh, boom. Doop, doop. I think Hello? I. I think I have both of you. W. I'm Matthew, here. are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, and Carrick, you're there. Yep. Holy. Yay. Yeah, all right, fine. Hey, W. Matthew, what's up? Uh, I guess since we only have a, a little time to break, I'll make a couple of topics quick. One, Steam sale is this week. Yeah. It is, and you posted about one in the chat room that I just added to my wish list because they do that thing where you can go through your, uh, you go through whatever, that stuff, and you get a card at the end of it once you go through it. Um, and, uh... Salt and Sanctuary? Is that what it's called? Yeah, Salt yeah. and Sanctuary. Yeah. Yes. I added that because that looked great. Um, and I'm that, a- is basic, that is basically Metroidvania, more specifically Symphony in a Night. Yeah. Uh, that is that is one I'll probably look into. By the way, I don't know. Did you ever pick up Axiom Verge? I no, didn't. I didn't. I know that's basically a Metroid game. It is. It's fantastic, but I, if you're looking more towards the Vania side of things, then yeah, probably not, but uh, yeah. big fan of that game. So uh, yeah, Steam sale is this week. I, I, I'm i sure they've been doing this for a while now, but I think it only really hit me now, is that <clears throat> I get excited for a Steam sale, but now I realize that whatever is on sale the very first day, that's how it's going to be for the rest of the thing. They've gotten rid of the daily deals, they've gotten right. rid of... Us uh, seeing you know big surprises and and getting extra dips in sales and stuff like that. They've it's it's gone the way of uh, just basically just having a regular old sale for a for uh, about a two week I'm period. Okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of miss you know it used to be exciting because every day around noon it's like ooh what's what's dropped maybe I can you know or seeing something that's on sale and thinking hey it might show up as a daily deal and be cheaper. But no, whatever it is now is whatever. So am it's I the only be. one then that decides what they're going to buy and waits till they go back to the normal price and buys them? <laughs> I try not to. Okay, so I don't know if that's because I know a couple developers and I'm worried that they're not getting the fun of what they're due. But Cadiz and I do that all the time. We, we'll email each other and we'll be like, "Hey, this game's on sale," and then 
you wait until it get it goes back to its normal price and then we buy it. I, I have no clue how that started, but for the past year, I don't think I bought anything on Steam sale. Oh, no, wow. I haven't actually. I picked up a lot of this year. I actually I picked up a lot of DLC. Oh, that would be a very good place to do it, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's where I go for my DLC. I picked up right. uh, Knives of Dunwall, oh, okay, Knives of Dunwall yeah. for uh, Dishonored. Dishonored, yeah. yeah what about they, the witches? I already had it. Okay, uh, that that's a very listening? good idea. I would do that. I would do that for sure. Yeah. I was thinking about getting the um, Sniper Elite uh, uh, DLC for saving um, uh, British Prime Minister uh, Churchill. Uh, the DLC for <laughs> for the season pass for Sniper Elite Three is like fifteen bucks. Maybe a little bit less than that, but I was looking at it, I was like, ah, oh, that's still too much yeah. for me. I was like, eh, I don't want to know. It's no. certainly a one-trick pony, but it does that one trick incredibly well. So, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what they offer in that DLC for 15 bucks. but I... oh, Go ahead, W. Matthew. Yeah, I guess I yes to move on. I know break is soon. So oh, no, no, you're fine. Uh, dude, we've got like six minutes before the top of the hour, and I can go over that. So just, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. But next. The topic is a little bit, oh, essentially a little bit of follow-up to E3. There are now rumors that the reason Sony pulled the Neo before E3 was because of Microsoft's leaked specs, and that they're in, maybe even going to delay it out of this year to try to retool it to make it a little more competitive with the Scorpio. You want me to answer that one? <laughs> I, I, I'm not necessarily uh, thinking he's wrong on that or that the rumors are wrong on that. No, but you, it's wrong. Yeah, well... So the fab, the fab taping's already done. So you can't... So you can't, you can't just remove what you want or add what you want when fab taping... I'm well, I'm well aware of that. I don't necessarily... They could always shelve it and be like, this is not going to work, but we'll see. Yeah, they could. Yeah, I don't know. I th- I th- I, I'm, I'm thinking they had every intent to show it off, to be honest with you. Well, I don't. If, if they did, what would they do then? They would cancel it and show it at uh, their next their event in February? Well, uh, no, they've got one in December. Probably games come up. Do they have it in December? Yeah, the PSX is, in, yeah. Yeah, PSX is in December, but Gamescom is, uh, when is Gamescom? September? It's August. August? It's early August. So, so you're thinking that just PR-wise they delayed it? just to not have it be announced at the same time as Microsoft. Well, well yeah, that makes yeah. sense. I mean, I, mm. I guess. The the rumor that it keeps going around is that they are just magically somehow able to, you know, adjust or, or you know, change hardware. And More likely, they can't, no, they can't do that, but more likely they're going to, if they go that route, they're literally going to say, we're not even going to fab this thing and go back and come up with a new design. Yeah, I would... That would be unique. <laughs> it would be unique, but I'm not necessarily sure. But it wouldn't necessarily surprise me because if they go ahead with it, what do they do? They kind of make a red PS4 owners that already bought a PS4 upset and then knows that they might get over with a power increase. It's like this is based in a year. A Scorpio is going to crush this. And oh, by the way, by the end of this by the end of this year, you're going to be able to get a PC with that kind with that is more powerful than that for about 600 bucks. So why? Yeah, well, so the difference. I mean, I'm sure you guys know if you've done the math. The difference is almost identical to the Xbox One and the PS4. So it's not like it's magically the Scorpio is some thing that is going to annihilate, regardless of what Microsoft says. But a company. I mean, so this is what I this is what I did 13 years at Hewlett Packard and working in fabs and understanding fab production. And you got, you, people need to understand just how much money these contracts are and, and how things are set forward. And you, you have to decide what you're doing, and then you move forward. There, there is a two-skew design that you could possibly do, which is where you have one that is slightly more powerful than the other. Mm-hmm. Which they've um, done before. Which they've done before. And they tell developers. But developers are stating, developers, by the way, are stating that's not happening. Now, whether... Some developers won't know, which is absolutely true, because Sony does a, a tiered development system just like Microsoft. So some people know stuff that others don't, you know, because you don't want to tell everybody your secret sauce. But, I mean, that, you're ta- that, is, a, that is a tremendous changeover for a company, any company to do, especially in fabrication process, because you're taping these out, you're, you're making deals, 
and remember that they have the same deal. You know, they have the ability to see the, see the same technology Microsoft does. Mm-hmm. So it's that not – Actually, is, that isn't entirely true. As I understand it, Microsoft and Sony basically have two entirely separate engineering teams engineering teams at AMD and they basically can't communicate with with each other. Like that, AMD's yeah. not allowed to tell Sony what Microsoft is doing. Yeah, that's it's never been true. Um, they've always stated that kind of stuff, but as you know, if you read any of the books on the history of creation of these systems, stuff does get out. And additionally, you have specific hardware SKUs that allow for a certain number of CUs. It has a certain ACU Sorry, as certain computation units, I want to make sure I'm not losing people. But you, you have these specific technical aspects that you can't just jumpstart and say you have something completely different. That's not – that would be AMD doing that. And we've already got people like Digital Foundry who have tracked down that the, that the PS4 is identical, you know, skew for skew, to their new chip that they're releasing, which makes perfect sense. The thing I think people are worried about is that they think that there's some, this power difference is – somehow going to magically make Microsoft better. But it's, I mean, the difference between the Xbox One and the PS4, for many gamers, not not for us, but for many gamers, is is negative. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And Sony knows that. Sony knows that they have the games, too. I think that's one thing people forget. Sony outsold Xbox One by an extraordinary number, and they aren't really releasing the best stuff. Not to be rude, but their first-party stuff in the past hasn't been... Amazing. You're 100 percent right, but I don't think this. What I'm about to say, I don't think this is going to happen. But I think I'll put this out there anyway. There are a lot of people thinking Microsoft. Right now, Microsoft is claiming the Scorpio is just going to be a better version of the Xbox Run, and they're going to be right technically because it's going to be the same architecture. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of people making the case that Microsoft might as well just call the Scorpio the Xbox to and basically say this is. Yes, this is backwards compatible with all Xbox One games, but this is basically a new generation. Well, X, uh, that would make sense to me. I don't know about you guys, but I thought, you know, the Scorpio, I love uh, call names, or, you know, <laughs> secret names. But it is iPad 1, iPad 2. I mean, yeah. They, they, don't you guys agree, Scott? Like, just call it the Xbox 2. I mean, it's... Yeah, I mean, uh, it is in the family. And it is. I know it, it is. You've got the you got the Nintendo NX next yeah. year. You've got the Scorpio next year, and you've got apparently maybe the Neo next year. I don't know if that's going to be this year or not. That, that's still some. The jury's still out on that, even though they yeah. haven't announced. Well, they've announced, but they haven't really you know, done anything about that. But um, for all intents and purposes, you're looking at. You're next. You're looking at that next generation. You are, next yeah. Year. But that's not exactly with Microsoft. Yes, it is a. They could say this is a new generation of console, and basically it is. It is because of the power difference. The problem on Sony's hand is they cannot say the Neo is the PS5. The power difference is not there to call it the PS5. It is still too close to the PS4 in power to say that's what that is. Well, it depends on what you're talking about power, because if you're talking about a 4.2 percent diff- or a, a 4.2 threshold change versus the six in the Scorpio, you're actually looking at a less change between the PS3 and the PS4, and you're certainly looking at a less change between the Xbox and the Xbox 360. Those were not great. I mean, anybody who understands PCs, the change from Power PC, which is the 360, to X64, which is the Xbox One, and slower. The reason why we're having issues currently is because the technology in the PS4 and the Xbox One are not that good. I mean, they're not the greatest upgrades. They're not. And as I understand it, as I've actually spoken to developers, is that apparently the single core performance can sometimes even be beaten by the Xbox 360. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, you're, that's, that's yeah, that is actually true. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be great to see better competition. But also, it's kind of this weird thing where by the end of this year, you're gonna, because of AMD's budget cards, basically, if, again, this is their benchmarks, skepticism needs to apply here, but if their benchmarks are right, their 480 is basically a 980, a GTX 980, and right. their 460 is basically a 970, which the 970 equivalent is basically what the PS Neo is going to be, and that's like going to be like a $150 card. You, and the $200 for the 480, 
you're literally talking about performance that's going to crush both consoles for about for about a six hundred dollar PC. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, PC and and console owners. I mean, I don't know, Scott, you have both, right? Yeah, and I think most of the people there probably have both. Um, the yeah. the one thing that I can't get my friends to understand is that a PC isn't a huge difference between a console. You know, it, that PCs have sort of adjusted; they become easier. There is a psychological there's a perception there problem, is a, yeah, yeah there's a psychological gulf when when you talk to somebody who says i want to buy assassin's creed and i want to put it in the xbox one hey buy assassin's creed unity on the console it's still going to crash on you but it doesn't matter <laughs> they you know um yeah. it, it doesn't matter and until that until that goes away and i think windows 10 has some positives in that i've actually shown people windows 10 and been like dude this you know some of this stuff isn't that bad some of it's terrible but some of that consoleitis of, and, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but just putting something in and having it work. I think nice. it's already starting to go away. NVIDIA yeah. reported last year a 50% year-over-year jump on GPU sales. Yeah, for sure. Which kind of seems to indicate that I think a lot of people are just getting fed up with consoles at this point. Well, they're not and a I big guess, jump, that's for sure. And I guess I, I to move on to, I guess, the G2A stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Which is sort of the final thing I wanted to talk about. Um, do you want to hang on and do that when we come back yeah. after the break? Yeah, I'll hang on. Okay, uh, we'll have both of you hang Oh, God, I don't know how to put both of you on hold without... Okay, if I, if again, disclaimer, if I hang up on both of you, please call back. <laughs> I don't think I will, but hang on. Um, did that work? I hope they're still there. Uh, we got them on hold. Anyway, when we come back, we will get into this G2A stuff with Tiny Build and 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 what went on uh, there. Uh, to find to just a it's uh, it's an interesting uh, setup, and we'll be talking about that when we come back. We've got uh, Carrick on the phone. We got W Matthew on the phone. I'm Scott. We've also got RJ, Matt, and Nate, and uh, we will re- be right back with more of in-game chat right after this. Here's music from Crimson Skies. <laughs> And welcome back to in-game chat. This is music from Anachronox. I'm Scott. Uh, we've got RJ here, also Matt and Nate. And we're gonna go back to the phones. Before we do, let me tell you who is hanging out in the chat room here. We've got Zero XVX W Matthew, who is one of the guys on the phone here. We've got Tactus 59 Rogue Baboon, Raspy Salamander, which is one of my favorite names. Multiles in there. Angry Centaur. That is Carrick, who is also on the phone with us. AC Wraith, Medusa's Mirror and Lavos hanging out in the chat room as well. So thank you guys for joining us uh, in the chat room on the show this afternoon. Now, I'm going to go back to the phones, and I'm going to try and do this thing again. Again, if I hang up, please call back. I don't think I will because I think I know what I'm doing. You're good. I think I'm good. Not yet. Just keep pressing the same button. Jesus. Hit the button, Scott. There we go. Hello? Hello. All right, we got you both on. Okay, good. God. Why is that so nerve-wracking? I know. Your finger just sitting there hovering over the buddy, button. It's I live, know. Man. It's hovering over the button like, do I press it? Do I, I don't not? know if it's going to work. Oh. Okay, but it works. Um, all right, welcome back. I wanted to uh, – I know W. Matthew, one of the things he wanted to get into was the uh, situation with Tiny Build and G2A. And uh, 
the situation here is that uh, the CEO of Tiny Build, I am not even going to try and pronounce his last name because I will screw that up, uh, Alex, uh, he accused the uh, game code marketplace G2A of costing his company 450 grand. Wow. Uh, providing uh, a marketplace where fraudulently, these are his words, fraudulently purchased games could be sold below retail price. And that's currently kind of where it sits. He, uh, it's, it's sort of his word against their word is where it's coming from. Although I am not so sure he won't be joined by some other people, <laughs> um, uh, echoing his sentiments. If, uh, if we get, the, uh, the of of action Hank has already said, like, if you're considering buying my game from, uh, G2A, just pirate it. You will do more harm to me buying it from there than just pirating it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. That's, uh, I don't know. What, what are your, what are you guys' thoughts on this? They're basically a black market thing. They know they're trafficking, and trafficking in illegal keys, and they don't care. And just look at where they're based out of. They're based out of Russia. Carrot. Um, I, I, I would, I would say I'm probably seventy-five percent agree with that. I have worked with both companies, so. Um, I don't work with G2A anymore, but that was prior to this. Um, Why don't you work with them anymore? Because, honestly, uh, I felt that there was probably something shady going on, but even with Tiny Build saying what they said, there's there's some really good NeoGAF threads, some Reddit threads that break down that what Tiny Build has said isn't exactly 100% true, especially the amount, because there's some st- sales that could have happened. You know, there's some various things about that price that he quoted. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, in in the end, probably one of those markets that is questionable enough. The problem is, is that it is a free market and you can't just say they're all pirated. You can't say that they're not. It's, it's one of the aspects of once a free economy like that starts up, once you have a, a system, a website like that created, um, then you have to look at who polices it, right? And you have to, mm-hmm. you have to, and I'm a person who constantly complains about YouTubers not policing their comments. So I can't really be duplicitous and say that, I, I want one group to, you know, police their stuff and another group not to police theirs. And so G2A the does is some kind of policing police. with what they have. I mean, it, there's something going on, obviously. I mean, I think everybody can agree. Your there's spider senses shit. were tingling? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I don't want to be known for that kind of stuff anyway. And, you know, a lot of those developers are my friends. And I'm going to be honest. I don't know if you guys saw, but this morning a couple developers have actually thanked G2A for their investigations where G2A did do some turn off. I haven't so read like, a, yeah, I haven't read an update yeah. on this. Yeah, so like the there are some whole... developers that have worked with them and have been happy. And so I just was like, I'm stepping out of it. Um luckily I stepped out of it a couple weeks ago, but I I probably won't ever use them again. You know, just, they, just on the base. The problem is they as a whole they don't and most of the time they don't and this isn't the first incident. This has happened not just with indie devs but with triple A devs in the past. This is by no means the first incident of this happening. No, for for uh, for G well for G two A or just or just G two A yeah G two A yeah no G two A yeah G two A has a has and somebody said this in the chat room they have they they don't have a very good reputation yeah. uh, and there's a there's a you know CD keys used to have the same sort of like this is a, little, this is a yeah, shady yep. thing this is a gray area yeah there's yeah. been a there's been a couple of them because look you we've talked about this on the show Nate and myself we've made mentions of you know, last not last year, a couple of years ago, uh, Nate and I both picked up Titanfall for about thirty bucks. Mm-hmm. I think was it less it was than like that? Fifteen bucks. Was it fifteen? Ten, 10 fifteen. Bucks. It was. It was real cheap. Fell off the back of a Russian truck somewhere. <laughs> and uh, but we went through. This was not a stolen key. I mean, we didn't. It, it, it was not a. It was not any kind of a Convert- stolen property or anything. We just. Conversion. We just went through a currency conversion, mm-hmm. and bought it through. Uh, th- bought it through that means. My point in saying that is that uh, I'm always on the lookout for something for a really good deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am extremely... Uh, the uh, problem is, is that G2A knowingly is trafficking in stolen keys. Right, but even when, I'm, even when I'm looking out for a good deal, I have never looked at G2A as thinking I will buy from them right. because I know of the sketchiness. CD keys, whenever they had uh, Just Cause 3 mm-hmm. on a real cheap deal, I said, <laughs> you know... 
I'll just chance it and see what happens. I think that's where I got Doom from. Yeah, it was like 30 or 25 bucks. I don't know what it was for Just Cause 3. And I said, you know what? I, here's my gamble. If it works, I, I got a game. If it doesn't, I'm out 25 bucks. So let, let's see what happens. I and, guess for me, the real question isn't even just about G2A because, I mean, I think we've all come to that to the same conclusion at different levels. But to me, it is those other ones because they do go through time frames where there's some questionable stuff. Uh, Green Man Gaming had it not too long ago. Green Man Gaming, who I used to like love and tell everybody about, and you're right, they had a huge issue pop up. And so the thing is, is it's not, it's those marketplaces are there because something allows them to be. And um, just because one is fine now, doesn't mean in a month we're not going to hear something like there's, there's a lot of sketchiness in the entire environment. And, that's what sort of bothers me. It's like you never know, unless you're buying it from like Steam, right? You, you never know exactly what you're getting and where it's coming from. That bothers me. Yeah. What do you think the solution on this is? What do you think the, uh, what do you think the, the, I don't know, where does it currently stand right now between G2A and, and Tiny Build? Are they still just, are they still button heads? Or is, or yeah, is... they're still going back and forth about the three day thing. Okay. So. Yeah. I know. I, I remember this. Th I remember. Like, G2A gave an ultimatum of, like, hey, turn over all the uh, keys that you say are fraudulent, and uh, we'll do our investigation of it. You've got three days to comply. And then Tiny Build shot back and said, no, we're not going to do that. You, uh, I can't remember what their demand was, but they said, you've got three days to do this. And I have no idea what happens at the end of these three days. I see your three days in race you six. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what the... You know what the outcome is? Is that well, the outcome we've seen. Just so you guys know, Jack Frey. I think it was Jack Frey's. Um, oh, what's his name? Uh, the the Irish kid uh, who uh, just super loud on YouTube. Well, they all are. Yeah, um, like, they've been narrowed down. Any. <laughs> he he dropped G two A just recently. So on my Twitter account, I've got a lot of YouTubers who are like, okay, I'm dropping G two A. I'm dropping. G2. So I think the outcome, regardless of what these two companies and again the other company that thanked G two A and said, actually, we've had multiple experiences with them and they're fine. Uh -huh. So I think regardless of those, you're going to see a lot of support just completely fade because no one wants to be. You know, it's like the political person who does something wrong. You know, it's like people start distancing themselves. And I think at minimum, G2A is going to see a hit from that. Now, now the weird thing is, did you guys know that uh, PewDiePie or whatever his name is is actually a sponsor for yep. both? He's a, he, yeah. Yep. Well, his he's likeness, their banner yeah, his them. likeness is in Speedrunners, which is a tiny <laughs> yeah. build thing. Yeah, and, yeah, and so yeah he's got that's a G2A. Just funny, deal. More than anything. Uh, I don't. I, I would not be surprised if he drops it too. <laughs> uh, he has never seemed like somebody. Well, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I like that direction. He's never, you know what? I'm nope. gonna hold my opinion back. I, I, I am. I'm gonna hold my opinion because I don't want to. I mean, I don't know these guys, and it would be the I same know. if they said something about me. So, uh, you know, I don't know what they believe, and I think the thing is, is that for some people, um, you know, they need to they need to sort of see how some of this stuff shakes out. But I don't think anybody wakes up and says these guys are fully on the up and up. Unfortunately, I did that with Green Man Game, and just like you mentioned, Scott, they, you know, they had an issue. And I thought that they were fine. And that surprised me. And I think that's sort of the beginning of the end for me, at least, as somebody who, you know, would, would tell people to go there. Yeah. Pretty uh, much at this point, the only places I buy PC stuff from is Steam, GOG, and Humble Bundle. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, you know, I'll do your, I'll, I'll, I'll do the Amazon stuff. You know, if Amazon has a better deal going mm, on right, or whatever, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah, go the through there. Deal's pretty good. Yeah, they've got some, they've got a, a few deals every now and again that, that actually, if a Steam's not running a sale, I'll find it cheaper on Amazon and go that way. Green Man, I think the last thing I bought from Green Man was, uh, <laughs> Uh, Arkham Knight on PC, mm, gotcha. um, which I didn't I didn't blame them for my problems with Arkham Knight. No, whatever you paid was about twice as too much. Anyway. Exactly, <laughs> it was way too much for what I paid. Although they did give me two copies. <laughs> Who cares? It's like punching you twice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they gave me two copies, so that was interesting. But uh, but yeah, so uh, anyway, um, oh, W Matthew, did you have anything else you wanted to uh, talk about before we let you go? I guess it, I would say this. It'll be, given where everything is going, given the state of E3, it'll be very interesting to see what happens in the next couple of years. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with Gamescom and PAX later this year. Yeah, yeah I'm interested in, in pretty much every show that we get this year. Uh, uh, Gamescom and uh, PAX, maybe. Some things don't necessarily, as far as Sony is concerned, you don't really, or the... the 
you know, the Sony and Microsoft stuff like that. Things usually don't happen at PAX, but right. uh, yeah. uh, you'll get that. We've got the Video Game Awards in December, and then you've got uh, PSX or the PlayStation Experience, whatever that thing is. Sony's thing. I mean, if I will say this, if the Neo is coming out this year, it will be playable at PAX because that will because that will be the last place people will be able to get their hands on it that is the basically if you're going to re release something in november or december that is the last event you've got this is true and to get to get at least people to get eyes on it from people and to and to get hands-on uh experience and man the uh just it was odd to me that they weren't at e3 i, th I maybe because i was just expecting it Mm -hmm. That they are, but and and because all the talk, all the talk leading up to it, you're thinking, yeah, it's going to happen at E3. They're going to do this it, thing. It is again very clear that they pulled it. There's that demo at the end of God, whatever that game's name is. It feels like they substituted in. There feels like so about gone. a twenty or twenty minute slot that they had available for the Neo that they just dropped to do the extended thing for Days Gone. Yeah. So yeah. the other rumor that had grabbed some attention was that the. Uh, Red Dead was actually supposed to be at that point, but yeah. because of the shooting, they pulled it. So um, there was actually some actual, pr not proof, but there was a couple pretty strong rumors, uh, which would be weird because uh, Take Two doesn't normally show off that kind of stuff in somebody else's video as an announcement. They do don't. They You're exactly right. Yeah, take, two, so, uh, take Two, Rockstar, that sort of thing, they don't... Uh, they don't usually. They usually don't have a, a showing it... Um, at I these... mean, if that's the case, we'll see that games come then. Yeah, it'll be interesting no matter what. It's going to be an awesome time for, for consumers, that's for sure. But it, all, it also creates an interesting, I guess, point is that, like, yeah, like, E3's years are numbered. I think it's pretty obvious. Yes, there's a lot of cool games and stuff, but the show itself got had even less relevance this year than in years past. It's clearly like something's going to happen. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm interested to see what's going on. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what's going to happen as the months go on. Uh, and, and, and outside of just the interesting thing of will they, won't they, I'm just excited for all the games that we got coming out anyway. So yep. at least if nothing oh, yeah. happens, I've, at least if I'm, nothing happens on that end, I've got this, I've got Dishonored 2 to look forward to. I've got Deus, uh, Ex. Deus Ex to look forward to. I've got Last Guardian <laughs> to look Ex. forward to. Um, and so, you know. For, yeah, for me, and I'm, I'm, the games I'm interested in for the rest of the year is, uh, in a couple of days, it's a niche game. Most of you probably haven't heard of it, but the new Zero Escape game comes out on Tuesday next week, Zero Time Dilemma. Yeah. In August yeah. is, is Dusax. In November, for me, it is Dishonored 2 and Pokemon. And then in December, it's South Park. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm I'm pretty busy the rest of the year as far as games go. Right, I uh, you know obviously for me you got to throw Destiny in there in December whenever they do the uh, they do the expansion on that because that'll be fun to get back into with with uh, with the guys and and go through that again like we did last year. Yeah. Um, so I mean I've got plenty to look forward to that I know is happening. So it's fun to kind of step outside and say hey maybe this will also happen maybe you know it's something to look at there and not be wondering if this is going to get released or is going to get delayed. Um, or... I seriously, again, like, it's not really to harp on it. Actually, I kind of mean to harp on it. But if the Neo comes out this year, given the reported specs of the AMD $200 card, Digital Foundry is going to say, like, yeah, this is a 970. Oh, by the way, this is better. <laughs> like... And it's not that much more expensive. Go over here instead. Like that is almost certainly going to be the story surrounding the Neo if it comes out this year. And again, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. So, uh, W. Matthew, thanks for calling in, man. I appreciate you staying on the line and and, and going through all these uh, stories with us and talking to us. Thank you. Thanks very much. We'll talk to you later. Uh, Carrick, you still there? Yes, I am. Hey, look at there. I can use a phone. Yay. Fantastic. All right, so we've got to, uh, we're at the bottom of the hour. I know it sounds like we just came back from a break, but we went over last time. So we need to take a break here. It'll be our final break of the show. Uh, and when we come back, uh, I don't know where we want to go with it. Well, you got anything you want to you wanna talk about for the last uh, 30 minutes of the show there, Carrick? 
Uh, no, I actually right. really wanted to ask RJ something uh, when okay. we come back about uh, Dark Souls. He was the Dark Souls. He is the Dark Souls guy. Yeah, I, I absolutely want to ask him something. Sixth run through, you say? Uh, sixth run through with my main character and probably my second with my other three builds. God. Yeah, I, I just have a quick question when we come back. On okay. That. Uh, yeah. Um, in we'll, my uh, number nine. Uh, Mighty number nine, yes. yes. I did want to and, go over that. And, and yeah, and anything you guys want to cover, don't don't worry about me. No, of course. Mm-hmm. We'll be back with more of in game chat here in just a moment. Uh, here is music from Ninja Turtles way back when on the NES. Yeah. We'll be right back with more of in game chat after this. Welcome back to In Game Chat. Uh, music from V V V V V V V. I guess I don't really know how they pronounce that. Uh, v. Yeah, V. What? What? <laughs> I don't know. Nate's doing stuff with his phone. Uh, welcome back to the show, everybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I'm Scott. We've got R J. Matt. Nate with his phone, and, we, and we, appreciate, uh, we appreciate that, Nate. And we're, Carrick, we're who is on the phone uh, with us right now as well, joining us for the entire show. Thanks for being on the show, dude. I guess yeah, of, thank you. Of all the things Nate could have showed us on his phone, I'm glad it was just that. I don't know why he did that. Uh, I guess you're responding to somebody in chat. Or no. you're, are you just showing somebody the... Okay. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Yeah, all right. Anyway, welcome back to the show. I uh, wanted to get into... Well, you had a question. Carrick had a question for RJ about Dark Souls 3. Yeah, and we can mm-hmm. certainly leave it till the end. Uh, mm-hmm. If you want to, let's let's cover your new stuff. I don't want to. Oh well, I mean, <laughs> the only thing on the uh, the only thing I wanted to get into was oh wait something moved here. Um, was it the Criterion game? No, it was the Mighty Number no. Nine situation. Yeah, let's let's cover that, and then if we have time, I'll, I'll ask. Um, that. which I lost my link to. Oh no. Yeah, I don't know. It got moved. It's oh, I don't know. Something happened. Uh, lost the link in my in my show notes here. Um, anyway, it had, already it, covered it, the fact that it had long credits. Well, no, it wasn't the fact that it had long credits. It had a horrible rollout. Yeah, yeah. A very very bad rollout. Um, yeah. RJ, you seem satisfied with it though so far. So far, so far. I mean, haven't it? Haven't had anything uh, gameplay wise. I haven't. You know, I haven't like played it. I haven't touched it. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Excuse me. What the beef is? Have you Have you played it at all, Carrick? No, actually. Um, I I did see what some of the beef was, and and the fact that like people were saying it was it was the DLC was messing stuff. Like all this weird stuff, graphical issues. But if RJ's playing it and he's not seeing it, then yeah. sometimes you have to look, you have to assume it just might be yeah. that person. Yeah. Like, I, like I said, but, I haven't played much of it. Like I said, I've just played the uh, prologue. The uh, prologue about been about six to eight minutes. But from what I've played, nothing. Are you playing on your out. PS4? PS4. I'm okay. playing on PS4 right now. And uh, yeah, there were nothing. a lot of complaints on Twitter um, from people right when it came out. Just all kinds of issues. So I don't know. I, yeah. you know there I, was no there was no patch on it when I put mm-hmm. it in the system. So it's been a minute since it came out. So I haven't seen anything wrong with it. Hmm. I mean, here's the thing, guys. Too, if you if you want to talk about it as a broader a broader issue, I mean, mm-hmm. how much 
uh, and I'm sure this game probably has its issues, but sometimes, you know, when a game does have an issue right at the starting, Twitter is the first place people go. Mm -hmm. And so, like, sometimes you do have to look at it a little bit and, 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 and sort of separate what's actually being said with, with what everyone's experiencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, cause that, cause I don't know, you know, if you, I mean, RJ's turned it on. Some of the people I heard were, weren't even able to turn it on. So yeah, yeah like I'm, it wouldn't I'm, boot. win for RJ. I'm looking yeah, so at far, the, yeah. at the one link I did have was that, uh, uh, those who wanted the game on the Xbox 360, Mac, or Linux were told they had to wait. PlayStation Network codes came later than expected. Backers yeah. who had been promised a pair of downloadable content co codes only received one of the keys. Um, now, the only thing they had with me was uh, the... I bought the uh, disc version, and mm -hmm. it had the uh, uh, Ray DLC, the crim something Crimson Destroyer something. It was a DLC that it was in there that was included in it. And because I bought it on the PS4, it was also available for the PS3. Now, I downloaded the one for the PS3 as well. Haven't, I haven't played that, activated that, but the DLC for the game wasn't available on the PS3. It was mm. on the PS4 just mm. and not the PS3, so that may have been something. I'm not sure, but uh, but uh, like I said, when I bought the disc, uh, everything was in there included. Some users have it. said that Mighty Number no. 9's Wii U version is causing freezes Rick. on that console yeah. and that uh, the game's lone downloadable content extension, which is an extra villain, uh, breaks the game. So, yeah, uh, it, huh. it 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 had it had a lot of issues, and there's been a lot of people disappointed with with what they invested in yeah. um, through Kickstarter on this. Uh, it also got it also had to go through a delay before it was even released. Right, right, right. It um, did. You played it, Pax Scott? I, I have never played it. I haven't played it at all. Yeah, I, I mean, I played it. it. I knew what it was because it's yeah. you know it's your Mega Man type game, sure. and uh, I. I don't know if it's sacrilege to say, but I've never been a big fan. Mega Man was one of the very... I'm sorry. Mega Man is one of the very first games that I ever bought on the, on my NES. In mm -hmm. fact, it was a game where I can remember my parents... We were in Walmart. The first Mega Man? The very first Mega Man. You're we were in, thinking, oh man, that box art is so cool. That was that was where <laughs> yeah, I was coming from. The, uh... Which has been... It's been voted the worst box art uh, ever. With the exception of, I think... The best box art being uh, for that Super Nintendo game that had dude with a banjo <laughs> and a beard on it. Yeah, I Phalanx. can't remember what. Yes, Phalanx. Which one? Phalanx. Yeah. Um, Old man. Trust me. Go look at. Go look at the. I'll, I'll, I'll go look at the box art for Phalanx I'll if you've got a computer you. nearby. It's. Uh, you have no. It's just completely random. <laughs> Old dude in a beard and a rocking chair playing a banjo. That's it. A li just a live picture of that. Um, I got it. So we're in Walmart, and uh, I, I just had, I had my NES with only, like, I think yeah. two games. I had uh, Mario and Duck Hunt, which everybody had, yeah. and I had Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Um, and then they're like, hey, go ahead and pick out you get, pick one of these games, and we'll, we'll get you a new game. And I didn't know what to get. I, I did not have Nintendo Power. I wasn't, there was no internet to follow. It was nothing. It was, you were going on box art alone. Yeah. Uh, when you were making purchases back then. So I looked at Mega Man and I said, oh, I want that one. And I played it and I hated it. <laughs> it was so <laughs> difficult for me to play uh, as a six-year-old. Um, or ever how old I was at that time. It was it was 15. <laughs> it was so difficult for me to play. Um, and Even, so I, I yeah. yeah, I was just like, oh, it's Mega Man clone, that's fine. Um, I, I knew a lot of people were happy about it or were excited for it. Uh, I knew it, it had caused a, a big uproar on Kickstarter just because it was, you know, Mega Man's creator or the Here guy who had some hand in, in making Mega Man was working on this, and he was he was finally out from under um, Capcom's, you know, uh, 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 you know, eye and 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 direction and that sort of thing could do what he wanted, and so uh, I was excited about that, yeah. but I never touched it. I um, sometimes wonder if some of the older developers. Especially, you hear about it with Shenmue, especially. Uh, you hear that some of the older developers working under limitations was one of the best things ever for them. Working under the limitations of the Saturn, stuff like that, were, were really good for some of those developers to learn what to do. And I wonder sometimes if these people doing their Kickstarters are getting on these systems that do everything, and they, ju they, they don't really concentrate on core gameplay as much. Uh -huh. And we see that when you talk, like even I've talked to some developers who have been around for a long time, and many of them, it, it, they get that glassy-eyed feeling when you start talking about a Trash 80 or an Apple II G, you know, an yeah. Apple IIe. They, and you ask them why, and they're like, well, dude, I had to make it work with, you know, 64 kilobytes of memory or whatever, you know. But they had it, to make it... I think uh, that 
really fosters a sense of creativity. It does. It and does. problem solving. Whereas like you get stuff like Star Citizen that's, you know ballooned out to unbelievable proportions. It's a movie yeah. now. <laughs> well, it ever comes. You know, you, you yeah. say this where where a uh, a developer is under a studio's eye saying, hey, "You need to work on this. Stop, mm-hmm. stop getting distracted. Get back on the, you know, get back on 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 pace here." And sometimes we give them, we we, we hate that. Sometimes we're thinking, "Oh man, let them do what they want to do." But then you got like you guys got you got guys like Tim Schafer. Yeah, that yeah, when they exactly. just do what they want to do. <sighs> man, I, I mean Levine or Levine. Uh, some of the stuff that we've seen, you know, with him bouncing around, and, mm-hmm. and I think Bioshock Infinite, honestly, when when you talk to a developer and they're like, I rebuilt it three times. The, yeah. You know what I would say? Why didn't you get it right the second time? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, like the first time, okay, great, you know, you were unhappy with some stuff, but at some point, um, they treat it a little bit like digital authorship of a book. And the, pro- the difference is, is that there are editors for books. There aren't for video games, and when you get a when you get except for money financially, that's yeah. the edit. That's the editing is like, hey, you only have a hundred million only, but anyway, you only have a certain you know uh, amount of money, and without that control and without somebody watching them and sort of making sure that the creative doesn't take over the de- developmental part of it, then then sometimes this can happen. And I think what happened with Mighty Number no. Nine most likely is that some of that did happen. That graphics got no, you know, these these you can do this and you can make it look like this. And um, maybe he just, you know, you're not tight. You're not like, you don't have that budget and right. you have to, you have to run it lean. You can and make concept art all day or you can make a quick exactly. video of what this is going to look like. Uh, but if you don't get the money in to make it look like that. Yeah. Um, and you'd think with four hours worth of credits, because you have that many backers to show off that you probably got the money in on that. But then you have to realize that uh, your money's, I know you budgeted this out, but yeah, without having the financial backing of a publisher mm-hmm. who can grab some more money somewhere and you've got to rely once your Kickstarter's done, you've either got to rely on that or you move to other means, early right. access or Or just, you're Schaefer and run three or four Kickstarters on the same game. Right, exactly. You do that. Sorry, too. that that burned man. Oh, I know, I know. That that was that was one of the most distasteful acts I think I've seen in a long time. Yes. Uh I, yes, I'm well aware. Do you uh, one of the games that's getting released, and I want to get to these phone calls. By the way, thanks for hanging on the line, uh, Chris and Michael. Uh, I am going to get to you guys. Was uh, System Shock getting uh, yeah, the, the remaster? remaster. Yeah. They was on Kickstarter. They pulled it, and I was a little concerned when they did that. But the reasoning why was now that they've come back, they're gonna they're gonna relaunch their Kickstarter, but they're gonna have a full demo uh, for people right. to try out. I think they're I think they're doing this very very well. Yep, um, giving people a chance to here's here you can play a, a little bit of what we've done and if you like that, throw us some bucks our way, and uh, we're going to continue to work on this thing. Because I was looking at the enhanced uh, edition that they just released of uh, System Shock One, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh yeah, but then you know when I heard about the uh, sort of redo, it's the remaster, but they they don't even have to call it the remaster anymore. Yeah, They're just going to call it System, System Shock. Shock. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Maybe I'll just wait on that. So, uh, let's go to these phone calls, and uh, of course, warning, I, I, I don't think I'll hang up on you on this one, so. All right, Chris, you there? Hey, Chris? I'm messing with you. You don't need to do that, my friend. <laughs> I'll hang up on you if that happens. You don't Jack, say let's something. Just go ahead and do it now. I'll hang up on you. What's going on, Chris? What's uh, what's uh, on your mind? Uh, not much. Uh, anyone looking forward to getting the seven days to die in a couple of days on the Me Too? Yeah, I'm planning on getting that as well, so uh, get with me. I'm looking for some other people to play with in multiplayer. What are you on? Uh, PlayStation 4. Okay. Um, when is that release? Uh, 24th or 28th? Uh, 28th uh, on 28th. Tuesday. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, and that is, what? That's uh, what is that, survival? Yeah, it's Minecraft uh, Zombie Survival. Uh, uh, from what I've, I've been watching a bunch of people uh, play the game and all, and you know, following their uh, videos that they've been posting. And, uh, I can't wait. <laughs> Are you into that one uh, at all, Carrick? Have you... Oh, yeah. Yeah. D- uh, it's actually one of the first videos I ever sort of cut my teeth on on the YouTube channel, was doing some just little tiny walkthroughs and, and Let's Plays of that. Uh, it's It doesn't look the best. I'll be brutally honest. It's not the prettiest game, but it's the construction of Minecraft in a zombie you know, survival game, mm-hmm. and it's hilarious. It's just fun. It's one of those games that when you play it, it's just enjoyable to play. 
And uh, I think that getting it on the consoles is, is awesome because there's a large number of people that will never see it otherwise. And uh, it's really cool for those developers to get, you know, to get the means to do it. Yeah. Uh, Chris, what else? Anything else? That's about it. Uh, still waiting on, uh, probably going to put off, put off on Uncharted 4 for a while, but I've been playing Metal Gear Solid 5, and I'm hooked on it as well. So that may be changing in a couple of days. But, uh, yeah, I've been looking forward to Seven Days to Die and other games like that that are coming like the uh, art way on later on from what I've read. Mm-hmm. All right, man. Well, thanks for calling in. And I'm right. sorry you waited so long, but thank you. That's okay. Appreciate it. All right, bye. Bye-bye. See ya. All right, we're going to get this next call. I think I'll do it right. Nope, I hung up on Carrick. <laughs> oh, no. I totally hung up on Carrick. I thought he was going to stay, but I hung up. Oh, God, let me get in the chat room. You had such a good streak uh, going to, Call Scott. back, Carrick. You told him like 35 times, I'm sure. I know, I know. Uh, hey, Michael, what's up? Oh, nothing, just. Want to talk about video games, because it's the video game show and stuff. So. Yes, well then, go ahead. What do you want to talk about? Um, mostly, uh, We Happy Few. Have you heard that? Um, yes, yeah. we have uh, Nate here, who uh, is on the show. He's your backer of that, right? Yes. Yeah, he backed it on Kickstarter. Uh, I I'm backed a, it that, too. I'm a fan of the company that's making it, Compulse... Compulsion. Compulsion Games. I was going to say it's compulsive, but it's Compulsion Games. I'm a fan of uh, who's making it as well. So, and you're getting that next, not next week. It's next month. Next month. Yeah. Next month. End yeah. of next month. So yeah, we're we're, actually, we're aware of it. I actually uh, backed it like enough to get the alpha. Ooh. Mm. And okay. I'm a bit concerned about the trailer. Have you seen the trailer at all of the EC trailer? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've watched all of them. Um, it's just. I'm not, I, I don't think it really represents what the game is about, really, yeah. Well, I, what would you say the game's about? Survival and crafting and stuff. Yeah, I, I could see that. Um, but, but, I mean, it is a story-based game as well, so, I mean, they have to show that aspect of it. As, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a mixture of, you know, randomly generated levels that are... Oh, what is the... What is the um... And let me let me okay let me try and pull Carrick Car- Car- in here without uh, hanging up on you, Michael. Hold on. Um, there we go. We got you both in. Carrick, thanks for calling back. I appreciate yeah, it. Sure. He may know some more about this game as well. Now I played it. Uh, we're talking about We Happy Few, um, Carrick. Yeah, I, yeah. I played yeah. it at uh, PAX last yep. year um, at some Microsoft event, and I was. <sighs> I don't know. I'm impressed when I see this thing. It shows. I wasn't totally impressed when I was playing it. Yep. Uh, nobody was. Nobody was there. Given the, the whoever was running that that demo at the kiosk was not at all interested in telling me anything. Um, in fact, it was he wasn't <laughs> with Compulsion. He was just with Microsoft, and so he was just like, "Yeah, you want to play it? Here you go." It would not give me any sort of like, "Now here's what you need to do. Here's how this works. Here's what's going on." Gave me no context for anything. <laughs> I kind of understood it from watching trailers, but even playing it, I just thought, I, I, I'm not, I'm not having fun doing this. Then, of course, I see the story reveal at E3, or at least the what I'm pretty sure is the opening of the of the game, when it kind of has to set up the situation. Yeah. Uh, but where do you go from there? What is the so? Your survival is basically making sure these people think you're taking your pill, uh, and then what? Finding out the underlying i don't know what is the goal that that is it and it's a psychological survival game so base or stealth game sorry psych, psychological stealth so you have to act a certain way around some of those characters mm-hmm. and if you don't then they can they can sort of sense what's going I on i haven't seen too much of that but yeah they it, haven't shown very much of they that. haven't and i i felt exactly like you did when i played it yeah I'm looking for. I love compulsion. Is is uh, they've only done one other game, which is uh, contrast, which I enjoyed very well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and I love talking to them. We've had we had we had Sam from their studio on the show for one of our really longer interviews, full hour. Um, whenever we talked to him, and he had he was great to talk to. Um, one of the things I loved about talking with him was the fact that he wasn't being pulled in any direction by a developer. So mm-hmm. when he was or not a, a, a by a publisher. publisher. So when he was telling us about the situation with Sony, um, it was a nice little insight because they were originally, if you remember this, and I know I'm going way off topic, uh, they were originally not going to be offered on the PS Plus for PlayStation 4's reveal or uh, debut month. 
uh, that was supposed to be Drive Club, but they couldn't make Drive Club. Uh, Drive Club couldn't make the cut, and so they put up We Happy or not We Happy Few. They put up uh, Contrast. Contrast, and you know he talked to me about that, and he said, "Yeah, it was going to be a better deal for us just for the, how much Sony was going to pay us to do that." Yeah, and they actually got a lot more because it was such a last minute deal that had to be done, um, and they were so brand new. You know, it was a brand new release game getting put on PS Plus immediately. So. Mm-hmm. The option to go free there instead of you know but getting money. I think money that's what gave do. most people their first exposure to them. Yeah, was they got you know they picked up their PS4, they had a free month of plus, and, then and they got a game. Here's out a of game. It. Let me yeah. see, check this out. So yeah. Anyway, I, I wouldn't would... mind if they had guns in the game, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess they don't have any guns in the game at all. Or I, I I've tried not to. Play. Just... Too much attention. Though. You're trying to say stay out of it. You just wanna, wanna you wanna be fresh more. whenever you go in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The way you I, it I just me. think weapons aren't that interesting. Uh. Well, we'll see when they release. I mean, have you are, are you had, did you back it, Michael? Yeah, I backed it and got the alpha, like I said. Uh. Okay, so you're getting you're. I, I was on the phone with Carrick when you were talking about that. You're getting uh, so you're getting a copy of the game when it releases. Yes, and also I'm playing through a pre-release version. Uh. Well, if you would uh, if you would do us a favor that weekend after the game releases, if you will remember to call us back and give us your thoughts on that, especially to compare them with Nate, who'll be playing it as well, um, just to see how you guys like it. Yeah, I'd I'd really love to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah. So appreciate you calling, man. No problem. Thanks. Uh, Carrick, you still there? Yeah. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, we've got a few uh, minutes left here if you wanted to ask uh, RJ your question. Yeah, so actually it can be to anybody uh, who's played a game multiple times in a row. I don't mm-hmm. know if you guys are all like that. I know some people only play them once. Uh, it's very rare that I do. I've done it. What was the last game I did it with? I don't know. What was that? I swear I thought I had one, and now I'm completely... Well, continue. Yeah, go okay, ahead. Okay, so, so basically, uh, you know, looking at, like, gameplay systems, especially... When you start, you don't know what you're doing wrong, and then you sort of identify what you're doing right, but you know it, and then pretty soon it's sort of instinctual. But at some point, especially in Dark Souls, stuff like that, playing through six, seven times, Mm -hmm. myself playing through certain games multiple times, I don't even want to say the numbers because it's embarrassing. What what sort of drives you to play Dark Souls? So, like, if you're on your seventh playthrough, what's the satisfaction? Like, if somebody said, okay, you can only give me, you know, a 30-second blurb about what the satisfaction you get from from going through it again, what Mm -hmm. would that be for you? Well, for me, it's the fact that the amount of souls, the amount of XP you get, it, it, uh, it, uh, it increases exponentially Mm -hmm. for the more you play it. So eventually you get to a max level. And the fact that I've never done, I've played uh, all the dark Souls series starting from demon souls, which was given to us a while back. Mm -hmm. But when, uh, but, uh, I've never gotten to the new game plus seven or plus eight, the max level of, uh, leveling up. It'll let you get to, and I've never Mm -hmm. done it before in any other game. And I figured this time I want to do it on this one. And gotcha. uh, if I build myself up more and more and more, the more I can help out uh, friends of mine and help out folks online get through those tough areas they've, uh, they're having difficulty going through. Yeah. So the better I am, the more I can help out, the better I can uh, help them. And it also benefits me as well because when you help out someone else successfully, you get uh, items that you can use to uh, better yourself even more so in the game. Mm. So basically for me, it's being more effective in uh, what I want to do yeah. uh, playing through the game. I've... I- uh, oh. Go ahead. I've played. There's several, several, several games that I play uh, multiple times. Uh, a lot of adventure games. You know, I'll play through. You know, you know, many times. Like you know, the Monkey Island series or uh, Grim Fandango stuff like that. And you know, it's one of those things that like once you know the puzzles. I for me, it's more just re-experiencing and just being a part of that story again. Yeah. Where, Almost like watching a movie again. Or yeah, a exactly. Again. Like, you yeah. know, why do I need to watch, you know, Empire Strikes Back for the 437th time? I've already seen it, you know. Is that a real number? Is that your real number? That's probably, Oh, mine's way higher than that. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, no, that's probably, it's probably, that's probably lowballing it. That's probably lowballing <laughs> yeah, for some people. I mean, I because, like, yeah. I'd spend an entire, like, summer, every day I would watch, you know. I did Legend with Tom Cruise. <laughs> Oh yeah, but Tom Cruise oh, and Tom Curry oh, er, and Tim, Tim Curry. Curry. Oh, fantastic! But you know, so like for me, like yeah, I, I could watch you know like like those movies, you know, Star Wars movies or something like that, or Aliens, or you know, and just I could just totally just like I know you know the words for word what's going to happen, but still I'm experiencing it. So yeah. or like Indiana Jones, yeah. you know, I just I like to experience you know movies and games over. 
there's something cool, I think, about what RJ said that you would not... So if somebody said uh, Dark Souls or something, I don't think most people would say, oh, I want to go help people. But there was something cool about RJ saying, oh, I like it because I can go help people through the hard parts. But a lot of people think of Dark Souls as single player with that multiplayer sort of add-on. Yeah. yeah. And there's something awesome. There, so it, it, I talked about it, and I, I don't know if Scott saw these on COG, but I talked about turning the HUD off in games is, is insanely fun, primal. One of the most enjoyable experiences I've had was turning off the HUD. And yet a lot of people, if they don't experience that little aspect, may not may not actually like the game. And it's weird because I know people who play Dark Souls that if they don't experience the multiplayer, probably wouldn't like the game that much. Hey, Carrick, we've got to run, man. I appreciate okay. it. But we've got to go. Thank you so much for being on the show, man. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us in the chat room and uh, listening on the stream and on their cell phone or radios. Uh, thanks, everybody, who grabs us each week on iTunes or however you get our show for later use. We really appreciate it. Head over to ingamechat.net. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, our forums at colonyofgamers.com. You can go to YouTube and check out uh, ACG there uh, to see what Carrick's working on. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're on Steam, we've got a Steam group where you can join up and play games with us and other listeners. Thanks, everybody. We will see you next Saturday. Have a great week. This is music from Bastion. Bastion.